Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, for anglers looking to target inshore and offshore species, we'll be taking a look at the Skeeter SX2550. So today, when we weren't lounging up at the bow, we were fishing, and I had to show these boys how it was done. If you require a boat built for family fishing, fun, and entertainment, we'll be looking at the Albemarle 27 DC. Albemarle is known for building beefy, tough offshore fishing boats. They have done it, but they didn't give up a thing when it comes to the family. And for the boater that wants luxury amenities and serious offshore fishing capability, we'll be taking a look at Grady White Canyon 326. In recent years, Grady has found that center consoles and dual console designs are far outselling the old walk around cutty cabin style. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Welcome to another episode of Florida Sports and Best Boat. Man, I love it when we bring all new boats to you. All three boats this week hit the market this year. I'm plenty excited about them. Speaking of new, we got all new boats this week, but I gotta tell you, Skeeter SX2550 came out with a whole new flagship, guys. 25 foot in length, so it's gonna get us out of the bay and get us in some bigger water. Boy, speaking of bigger water, at Albemarle 27 DC. I gotta be honest with you, I was a little skeptical. I got a lot of hours on the old 28 diesel Albemarle, and it was a very similar layout. And I was concerned about the center of gravity powering it with outboards. Was I ever wrong? It rode like a champ, and that dual console, I become a bigger fan of it every time I fish it. Speaking about becoming a bigger fan of a boat, Rick, Grady White is a boat company that goes back so far in, in boating history, and we all know them. We've seen thousands of them on the water. You know, Grady's taking a different approach to boating nowadays, and they're changing with the times. Grady White now builds more center consoles and dual consoles than they do their old style cutty cabin. And every center console Grady I look at grows on me more and more. They're beautiful boats. This 326 Canyon they brought us this year, it's an all new boat for them, and what a winner. We need to get on the water and get to it. When we return, our hosts take a look at a boat designed for anglers looking to fish successfully inshore and off the beaches, the Skeeter SX2550. But first, let's join our hosts as they discuss the latest in outboard repower from Yamaha in this week's power segment. Okay, Rick, you know that my husband and I recently bought an older boat that we're redoing. He had mentioned the Yamaha 200. How hard is that gonna be for us to repower this boat? Not as hard as you might think and not as hard as you used to be. Lori, there's a whole lot of people that are starting to learn that boats last a whole lot longer than motors do. Fiberglass cures for like 50 years, okay? The new Yamahas can be rigged with mechanical controls or digital controls. That means you can take a brand new motor like this Yamaha 200, put it on your 10, 15 year old boat, you got a brand new package. So what you're telling me, Rick, go ahead and put the motor on and I'm gonna have a brand new boat? That's exactly right. A brand new motor makes a boat ride brand new. This segment brought to you by FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. I'm sorry it's last minute, but I can't make it. Good luck out there. Hey honey, heading out of town now. Not sure where I'm going since Mark couldn't make it, but I'll call you when I get back. Northeast wind five to 10 knots. Becoming salt 10 to 15 knots in the afternoon. These two to three feet with the dominant period. Dispatch subject signal seven. Looks like he fell overboard without a flight check. 10 4 will arrange notification to family. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they take a closer look at the Skeeter SX2550. Representing the bay boat category, the Skeeter SX2550 has an overall length of 24 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet 5 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 300. Designed to easily navigate inshore waters and handle the chop offshore, she has a draft of 14 inches, a dead rise of 14 degrees, 
a weight of 3,660 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 76 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Hey guys, I tell you what, I couldn't figure out what was so mysterious with Skeeter. They wouldn't even let us see this boat last night. Now I can tell why. Yeah, we, we're real excited about seeing this whole new look for Skeeter here. This is the SX2550 gang, and I'm telling you what, this does not look like any Skeeter we've ever seen before. This is a boat that is gonna be really capable to get us outside the inlet and run around looking at the beach this morning. You know, something immediately jumped out at me about the boat, it doesn't look like Skeeter, is this little tip in the shear up here and a beefy looking flare to the bow. I mean, that's certainly gonna handle inlet conditions and running in the chop on the beach. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it in the ocean. I'm not sure this boat rides like any other Skeeter we've been in. Well, I'm dying to find out. How about you? Well, you know I love a bay boat, and especially where we live here in South Florida, to get inshore and offshore. I'm excited about today, and I'm excited to see what Skeeter's done different. Yeah, you know what? None of us have actually been inside the boat. What do you say we get her in the water and get offshore? Let's go. Let's do it. Skeeter's been building bay boats a long time, and you know what? They're all good, but they've all been very identifiable. Not the new one, they've got a new queen of their fleet. It is the Skeeter SX2550, and she is gorgeous. It's a little bit wider, it's a little bit longer, but it's a lot deeper, totally different shear line, whole new concept, this boat rocks. The most pronounced changes you're gonna to see to this hull design are a little bit of added dead rise, which made a big difference in the softness of the ride, but more importantly, they've added a bunch of bow flare, which definitely is gonna keep the water down. There's a little bit of pitch down in the shear, and all of these things combined to make this boat much more offshore capable than a smaller bay boat would might be. Another difference that's gonna make you feel much more secure when you get offshore in this boat is an additional five inches of freeboard. Now that gets you feeling like you're comfortable enough to put your legs up against a combing bolster while you're fighting a fish without feeling like you're gonna fall out of the boat if it's rocking. Not only were the gunnels being higher and the boat being deeper, more comfortable to me, but it had a nice high console which really broke the wind. You didn't need a whole lot of windshield. I had plenty of room up at the bow. Having those cushions off made it really easy to fight that snook. There was nothing for me to trip over. It was really convenient to have the washdown system midship on the boat, it made it so easy to reach the stern and the bow. It's one thing very consistent about Skeeter. They're so well built, so well laid out. Their rear seats, for example, there's a casting platform back there you can hop up on, but it converts instantly to rear seating with very few moving parts that'll never break. You come to appreciate that if you spend your life on the water. So when you don't want to fish and you want to take the family out, it was really easy to set up the cushions, pop those headrests back in and have a lounge area to relax on for when you want those family days at the sandbar or just cruising. One thing that made the Skeeter a lot easier to fish, I love the big high bow platform, but what made it for me was being able to have an adjustable step to get up on it. You can set the step in a few different positions it makes it a whole lot easier coming up and down 25 times a day. Now, as I said, Skeeters are bay boats that are really comfortable in their skin. This isn't a boat that's trying to pretend to be something it's not. But the new 25-foot version of their bay boat is gonna definitely expand your capabilities in a way that you're really gonna learn to appreciate. Okay, let's, let's talk about real math for a minute. She's a foot and a half longer than what the 24 is, but doesn't it ride bigger? It's got a bigger boat ride to it. It's deeper. It's just built for a customer that wants to do a little bit more than just fish along the beach and in the bays. Exactly, and if you're gonna get offshore and fish too, another thing they've changed is they added five inches of freeboard to it, which made a huge difference. Now, you know, you're fighting a fish standing there braced up against this bolster, and it makes a big difference when you're offshore under those kind of conditions. You guys are missing uh, so much though. Skeeter brought the family in with this boat. First time they've ever put a, a head in a console and the first time they've ever used a pop-up table up here in the bow. So they had the fishing in mind, but this time they included the family. It's, it's become more and more important in the industry and certainly Skeeter's ahead of that as they have been all the time. But I gotta tell you, if you're looking for a boat that can handle it offshore, but is a true bay boat and a little bit bigger than what you're used to from Skeeter, this Skeeter SX2550 needs to be checked out. When we return, our hosts examine a boat built for a mix of family fun and hardcore fishing, the Albemarle 27 DC. This segment brought to you by Two Rivers Boatworks, exceptional design, quality, and craftsmanship. 
Dreaming of transforming your boat into the envy of the fleet? The experts at Two Rivers Boat Works are dedicated to customizing your boat to your specific needs and personality. Specializing in fiberglass and composites repair, professional painting, systems installation, and more. Founded by boating enthusiasts, we understand the enjoyment of being on the water, offering exceptional design, craftsmanship, and quality so you can spend more time on the water than dreaming about it. Visit our facility in Stewart, Florida, and turn your boating dreams into reality. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they take a closer look at the Albemarle 27 DC. Representing the dual console category, the Albemarle 27 DC has an overall length of 30 feet, a beam of eight feet, eight inches, and a max horsepower rating of 500. Built with family comfort when venturing offshore in mind, she has a draft of 20 inches, a dead rise of 24 degrees, a dry weight of 8,000 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 170 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Now, when I think about Albemarle boats, you know, I think about the classic Albemarle diesel twin inboard powered express fishing boat, okay? This boat to me looks like an express style fishing boat. It's laid out like a dual console, but it's very reminiscent of their original design. In my performance running, I felt like I was running an express boat. How did the boat fish, Rick? I mean, was it that same vibe? Are you getting where I'm coming from? It fished like an Albemarle Express. I really didn't know what to expect with the outboards, but we certainly got where we were going quicker. Okay, but the fishing was so much the same. With a full family on the boat today, everybody was comfortable. Lori, how did it look from a family perspective? This boat had a lot of versatility today, from sandbar, cruising, fishing, obviously. You could not ask for a better boat for a fishing family. I'm gonna tell you, with this dual console concept, with a fully functional fishing cockpit, this is an ideal family fisherman. The 27 dual console from Albemarle is kind of a departure from the model that this boat company is really well known for, and that's inboard powered express fishing boats. This boat's got a lot of similarities to that design, it just brings everything out into the open air. Now on the dual console, in favor of having a covered up cabin down below, you've got a forward seating area that provides plenty of places to relax and lounge and socialize, but you're just out in the sun doing it. The center of the boat is very similar to the express design. You've got the dual console configuration underneath the shade of a hard top, and the cockpit is open just like that on the inboard powered boat, only this boat's powered by outboards. Now there's gonna be certain advantages to having outboard power as opposed to inboard power. What are those advantages? It's pretty simple. One thing is very easy to work on the motors. They're right there in front of you. An inboard boat where you've gotta get into the builds, that's problematic. Now, inboard engines also take up a lot of room underneath the deck on a boat. Having the outboard power option on this boat allows you to utilize that space that normally is gonna have engines in it for other things such as insulated storage, live wells, and access into your bilge. Now, the helm area on this 27 dual console was very reminiscent of a larger express fishing boat. The 27 DC features a full height windshield that goes from the hard top all the way down to your helm and this is really useful if you're offshore on a rough day or if you get caught in a thunderstorm, it's gonna keep you out of the weather. If you need to open it up, obviously you can open the center section. That provides free passage to the front of the boat and lets a lot of air blow through there, which makes it much more comfortable, obviously. A 58 square foot cockpit on a 27 foot boat is big, but Albemarle, being a Carolina boat builder, makes it even bigger by having it totally uncluttered. We had five people back there fishing with all the room we needed. We hooked up an ice cobia with a bull shark all over it. But before I know it, he had grabbed the gaff himself, jumped over on that platform, gaffed the cobia, threw it in the box, closed the box, game over, the bull shark still looking for that cobia. We spotted that cobia from the aft facing seat coming in on our baits. But not only was it super comfortable, if you're live bait fishing, that live well is all the room you can ever need to keep a bait supply for the day. Listen, I grew up a charter boat mate, and the one thing I appreciate is a good tackle station that's plenty accessible. I could not only reach this one for the action, but as a bonus, it had all the switches for running the systems in the cockpit. I could run the raw water, the fresh water, the live wells, the pumps, the lights, everything in the cockpit could run from right there at the tackle station. A great innovation. So not only was this bow seating comfortable, you've got your safety rail, you've got your cup holders, you've got a spot to charge your phone, 
and a recessed storage area, which is great for magazines and knickknacks. So it came to lunchtime, and I gotta tell you, I love a boat with a sunshade, and this was perfect. It covered the entire bow area. We had five people up there for lunch. Everyone was comfortable and kept out of the sun. So let's talk about storage on this boat. There's something to be said when you get two for one. If you're not using it for storage that day, for towels and boogie boards and so forth, you've got an insulated fish box. Great setup when you have two consoles. One rod storage, there's a little lay down area if one of the kids want to lay down. In the other console, you had a head, a sink, and additional storage. Everyone knows I'm a huge fan of safety, and under the port side seats, was all the safety gear, which makes it nice, especially if you're in an emergency situation, easy access. The driver can actually just reach over, open the door, and grab what he needs. So fishing today, you didn't see a seat in the stern. That's because it was folded into the transom. Well, at the end of the day, when we're riding out and you need to have that comfort, it's there. The seat just folds right back out. You know what, guys? That was a great day on the water with a great crew. We caught fish, we relaxed, we did all that. I'm gonna tell you, if you're looking for a boat for your family to go fishing on and then have a great time in the afternoon, the 27 DC from Albemarle is one you don't wanna miss. When we come back, our hosts take you through a boat where offshore fishing features and luxury amenities come together, the Grady White Canyon 326. This segment brought to you by Suzuki, the ultimate outboard motor. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they check out the Grady White Canyon 326. Representing the 27 to 32 foot class in the center console category, the Grady White Canyon 326 has an overall length of 33 feet 1 inch, a beam of 10 feet 9 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 700. Engineered for long distance offshore fishing and luxury cruising, she has a draft of 24 inches a dead rise of 20 degrees, a weight of 8,500 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 327 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Where would you rather be than in the cockpit of the Grady White Canyon 326? I can't think of any place right now, Rick, and you know what? I'm excited to be on this boat. This company was built on walk around cuddy cabin boats, if you remember. I mean, I remember there was a time you never saw a Grady White center console. This boat right here, totally different from the original profile. Very exciting though. One thing all of them share in common, they've managed to combine fishability with comfort. Their whole Canyon series, everyone we've seen has been absolutely fantastic. My expectations for today are through the ceiling. Let's go fishing. We better get started. Now Grady White is bucking the trend of racy go fast style center consoles and leaning more towards a traditional big Carolina sport fish styled hull and incorporating that big seaworthiness into a boat but also making it a sporty outboard powered boat at the same time. Now although this Grady White doesn't look like a race boat that doesn't mean there's nothing sporty about it. The Grady is capable of speeds up to 50 miles an hour and cruising comfortably at 30 miles an hour offers 1.6 miles per gallon efficiency. Now one thing Grady White is known for is their big water capabilities and this boat's no exception. At 33 feet with a 10 foot 9 inch beam, this is a big wide platform. Like I said, this is much more reminiscent of a big sport fish boat and you're going to feel that in the ride. The 20 degree dead rise on this boat combined with those dimensions are going to provide a ride that's going to make you feel really safe and secure if you've got the family on board and the weather gets a little bit rough. Grady White continues after all these years to be on the front of the evolutionary curve of so many things. And here's what I mean by that. In the cockpit of the big center consoles they build now are some of the darndest rigging stations and tackle drawers you've ever seen. I had every piece of tackle I could ever use and a place to rig it right there, oh excuse me, next to the refrigerator if you need a cold drink. Now here's the reason why center consoles 
have been so popular for so long and will continue to be into the future because you get 360 degrees of fishability. We fished up in the bow, and I gotta tell you, we had the perfect gunnel height for casting from there, and we could stand up without standing up so high that we felt like we were gonna fall overboard. Good platform, good gunnel height, excellent bow. A clean boat is a happy boat, and you talk about a thousand little things that makes your day easier. The hoses on the Grady White reached all the way around the boat. That meant wherever you released a fish, you had a hose right there to clean it off. When you get to the dock, cleanup's easy. Like most Florida summer afternoons, the afternoon ride home isn't as calm as the morning ride out. Well, we switched to the stern seating for the afternoon ride home. It was just as comfortable as it was up front. Grady White does an excellent job of making sure everybody's comfortable wherever they sit on the boat. This Grady features three across independent captain chairs behind a panoramic curved acrylic windshield that keeps you out of the weather while offering you a really, really nice view of everything coming your way. The center console on this model offers plenty of space down below, over six feet of headroom, lots of rod storage, a china head sink, I mean, trimmed out in teak. This is actually very similar to a cabin design on a lot of boats. Grady's done a great job of incorporating a lot of the creature comforts found on a cabin boat into this center console design. George, you know how I'm always trying to give boats a personality, if you will. Each boat sort of got its own feel. All morning while we were offshore fishing, I never had to think about where stuff was. I never had to worry about how the baits were doing in the live well. Didn't have to worry about how the seating was. Grady White's just got this boat buttoned up. They do. You know what else? I mean, let's go back to what we said earlier about the center console model being a little bit different for Grady White from the traditional walk around cutty that they started with. And they do the center console model a little differently in, in a good way. A lot of the boats that you see now, center consoles lean more towards that really racy design, kind of go fasty, you know, race type of boat. Well, this is a boat that's got Carolina heritage, big boat feel. I mean, you feel like you've got a more traditional sport fish boat underneath your feet, and that's a good thing. Now, the ride on the boat, it's a big, heavy boat, it's substantial. If you've got a family and you want to go out and the weather's a little dicey, you're going to feel really confident in this boat. All right, follow me now. You ready for this? Sure. This is a destination boat. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. As you, as you make your travels through the boating world, as you start out with your John boat and you graduate up bigger, this is where you end up, okay? This boat is so ready to take on big water. I can tell you this much, I never want to be caught in an ocean that's too big for the Grady White Canyon 326. So guys, we had three new boats this week and I had three new experiences. I can't wait to see what experiences we're gonna have next week. I'm excited too, Lori. Hey, if you want any more information about the boat you saw this week or any boat you see on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, check us out on the web at floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next week on another edition of Florida Sportsman Best Boat.